what is the impulse response in very simple words if the input to your DSP system is an impulse Delta N the output is impulse response as simple as that so if I give you a problem and I ask you calculate the impulse response of the system you're not gonna come back and ask me um, hey you're not giving me any input if I ask you you have to calculate impulse response your input is an impulse Delta N so in the past it has happened that a student asked me what is the input again impulse response Am I, uh, if in, uh, impulse response is inquired input is an impulse what is the importance of impulse response so impulse response basically characterizes your digital system as simple as that if you know the impulse response of your system you can find the output for any input if you know the impulse response you can find the output for any input whether you know the difference equation or if you don't know the difference equation right so impulse response is extremely important and from this point on every system every DSP system will be described in terms of its impulse response whether we are in time domain or when we move to frequency domain in chapter number four then the impulse response is going to be defined in the frequency domain in the Z domain so again you're going to calculate the impulse response using input to be impulse and how you calculate the output of a system using impulse response so there's a method called convolution which we're gonna study in this chapter the last chapter of this is convolution the last topic of this chapter is convolution uh, which is for the next week actually not for this week uh, but when you apply a convolution process between the impulse response and the input you get the output right and here I'm showing you what a convolution is so it is represented by a asterisk here so y n is equal to h of n which is the impulse response represented by h impulse response convoluted with x of n and convolution actually is a commutative property so you can also do x of n convoluted with h of n so once again if you know the impulse response you can apply convolution uh, and then you can find the output of any digital system and actually you will see in the frequency domain in the Z domain uh, in the future chapters that convolution process becomes multiplication process in the Z domain and and most of the time actually when we are working uh, we prefer to work in the frequency domain because the convolution process becomes very simple a multiplication process and once you um, uh, find the value of your system uh, in the in the frequency domain in the Z domain then we go back to the time domain uh, and convert it back using inverse Z transform so instead of applying a convolution process we apply a multiplication process in the Z domain between the impulse response H of Z and the input X of Z and then um, calculate Y of Z and go back into the time domain using the tables the Z transform table you're not going to do any um, calculation of Z transform by hand in this course of course we are just gonna use tables anyways um, that's just a tangent let's go back, come back to this so uh, how impulse response um, is going to be calculated for any system look at example 3.10 you have uh, this is the same system as it was given in 3.8 example yn is 0.5 xn plus 0.7 xn minus 1 plus 0.9 xn minus 2 a difference equation and yn does not depend on any past output sample so we expect that yn sequence is going to be a finite sequence so how you calculate the impulse response of this system um, in this case xn is going to be an impulse since, since output, is, output is impulse response so you calculate the output to be impulse response which we represent by h so h of 0 that is impulse response when n is equal to 0 0 0.5 delta of 0 plus 0 0.7 delta of n minus 1 0 minus 1 plus delta of uh, plus 0.9 delta of n minus 2 0 minus 2 and remember impulse function only um, uh, impulse function is non-zero only when its argument is 0 right and if its argument is not 0 then impulse function produces a 0 value 
so the argument is zero only for the first one right here and for this argument is negative one for this argument is negative two so these two values are going to be zero and it will only be 0 0.5 so h of 0 is going to be 0 0.5 and similarly h of 1 is going to be 0 0.7 because the argument of delta is 0 and h of 2 is 0 0.9 and if you go beyond that h of 3 then delta 3 delta 2 delta 1 argument is non-zero so the value of h of 3 will be 0 and so on after h of 3 h of 4 h of 5 all the values are going to be 0 so the impulse response in this case is comprised of only three values impulse response is 0 0.2 uh, 0 0.5 0 0.7 and 0 0.9 so if you have three values non uh, non zero values of impulse response for n is equal to 0 1 and 2 right and this is the plot of that in this case these system are called finite impulse response systems because the number of um, values uh, of h impulse response are finite values finite impulse response system creates a big big category of signal processing systems we're going to look at in the future two types of filters finite impulse response filters and infinite impulse response filters so finite impulse response systems create a big category of signal processing uh, actually there are two categories finite impulse response DSP system and infinite impulse response DSP system so anytime somebody asks you what's the finite impulse response system the simple answer is if the impulse is uh, if the impulse response has finite number of values then the system is finite impulse response system and this will happen remember this will happen when your system difference equation only depends upon the input input and past samples of the input then your system will always be finite impulse response system okay look at example 3.1 in this case your input your output also depends on the output sample previous output sample so you apply the the same way you you calculated the um, impulse response in the last example exactly the same way you start calculating in this example as well and you will see that your impulse response will keep on going it will not end although the values become smaller uh, but it, they are not becoming zero so these type of systems where the value of h impulse response have infinite number of terms they are called infinite impulse response system infinite impulse response system and that's the second category of DSP system so infinite impulse response system they have infinite number of values for H and generally if the system is stable those values start going down but they will not become zero until you hit infinity right but the number of values are infinite so they are called infinite impulse response system now how do you write like the way you wrote and i didn't touch on that i, I put it down here this is your h of n for the last example right right so 0 0.5 was the first value at n is equal to 0 so we can write down 0 0.5 delta n plus 0 0.7 delta n minus 1 plus 0 0.9 delta n minus 2 that defines h of n so for any other values of n except 0, 1, 2, h of n will be 0. It will be non-zero if n is equal to 0, the value will be 0 0.5 because delta will be 1 at that time. If n is equal to 1, delta will be 0 over here. So the value of h will be 0 0.7 and when n is equal to 2, then this is going to become 1 and the value is going to be 0 0.9 for any other value of n delta function is going to be delta argument is going to be non-zero and h of n is going to be zero so this is you know an easy way to write the expression for h right now we can also write the output value in terms of h observe 0 0.5 is what 0 0.5 is h of zero right h of zero is 0 0.5 so I can replace this by h of 0. I can replace 0 0.7 by h of 1. 
because h of 1 is 0 0.7 and I can replace this by h of 2 and actually this expression which is 3.2 this expression is the convolution expression so when you expand y is equal to h convoluted with x this is what you're going to get h of 0 x of n plus h of 1 x of n minus 1 plus h of 2 x of n minus 2 and if you keep on going plus h of 3 x of n minus 3 plus h of 4 x of n minus 4 so that's what you're going to get when you convolute h and x so in the next example i'm showing you this expression for convolution h of 0 xn plus h of 1 xn minus 1 h of 2 xn minus 2 and so on and so forth from 3.3 um, and we're going to revisit it uh, in the last uh, topic of this chapter which is actually depends on convolution or discussion of convolution uh, how how many different types and not different types how many different ways that you can perform convolution and this is the first method which is the equation method this is the convolution equation all right example 3.12 what does it um, ask you it basically asks you that the IR system given in the last example 3.11 this is an IAR system infinite impulse response system so the IIR system given in the th last example show that using the difference equation and using the convolution expression because we, we know what the values of H not H1 H2 is we calculated those values so we can plug in those values to find the convolution expression so I'm asking you in this, or I'm showing you in this, that if you use the difference equation, and if you use the convolution expression, your output is going to be the same, which is a proof actually that convolution is uh, uh, the method to calculate the output from the input samples and your impulse response. And the input that I'm choosing over here is a step input. So xn is equal to un, which is of course one for all the values of n greater or equal to zero and zero otherwise. So go over this example, I don't wanna read through it. You can go over this example and you can see the equivalency through both methods. The so both methods are going to give you equal values, which proves that again, convolution is a valid method to calculate output of a system from impulse response and your input. And the last topic uh, for this week is bounded input, bounded output stability. Uh, basically, it tells you that if your uh, input is bounded, that is if your input is not increasing as time is increasing, it's a DC input, or let's say it is uh, a sinusoidal input. Uh, so if the impulse response terms of the system, they are decreasing with the time, as n is increasing they are decreasing then for any bound bounded input your output will also be bounded that is your output will also be as time will increase it is going to be uh, it will approach to a constant value or if the input is sinusoid it will approach to a sinusoidal value but it will not become unstable that will it will not increase with time so if your input is bounded then for the stability of the system that is what does what does a stable system means that the output is not increasing as time is increasing output is constant it become it can become zero it can remain constant or it can be a sinusoid that is moved between two values or a square wave move between two values uh, so those are the bounded outputs so for any bounded input if the impulse response terms if you add all of the terms and the sum of the absolute values of impulse response terms is less than infinity, then your system is stable. In other words, if your impulse response terms are decreasing as time is increasing, then your system is going to be a stable system if your input is a bounded input, that it is not uh, an input which is increasing with respect to time. So generally, if h of k is decreasing at infinity it's going to become zero your system is stable if h of k is increasing that it is it, as n is increasing your uh, impulse response is increasing that system is going to be an unstable system